between Exodus and Reign of Light, your voice has gotten a lot stronger. Is it a mixing thing, or do you have any lifestyle change, or like eating better, or working out, or something like? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> for for um, I think that was for um, for another flight. That was the first time I actually recall the voice a few times. So uh, I had different takes together, and they're mixed together. So it's just oh. not one voice. Oh, I see. But there's a there's a huge difference. Well, okay, good. I, I didn't notice it was that okay. different, but I think it was more screaming before. Mm. And um, on this one, I had the screaming voice, yeah. and I actually really pushed it even stronger than before. But I had a, a more like mellow thing, more you know. Well, yeah, there's a lot more deep, spoken in the just deep, deep right. thing. And Stefan, who who did mix the two albums, he actually liked the, the the deep voice better than the screaming one. So I, it sort of mix it that way. And I think it will be mixed the other way, it will be a hell lot more aggressive, but yeah. maybe less. More well, yeah, I mean, that's a way to look at it. It's just that the, the speaking vocal is pushed forward more. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, in the that's mix. what I did. Right, yeah. yeah. No, it sounds great. Like, I really was, the first time I heard Rain of Limes, it's like, steroids. <laughs> right, that's a good thing then. Can you talk about the era one and the listening magic a little bit? Yeah, sure, but it, what I, I, I was trying to point before, uh, to us, we really consider it as a side project. Something, I yeah. mean, that, that was C&I, mm -hmm. and that's it. Okay. Only electronic stuff with vocal. And we, we, we've tried to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. We didn't want it to, to add mm -hmm. things up and up. That's right. what I told him, like, keep it simple. You know, right. like, something naked so I can play around with the vocal. Mm -hmm. and that was a good experience for me, too, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if there is not much in the music, you, you, you gotta fill out. The, the space somehow and mm. I tried to, to find a flow mm. you know to, to have rhythm in my vocal which wasn't much the case before okay. so I learned a lot on this project but I was still something parallel to summer not not really bound to summer but as it was bound on the same contract you know century me that decide that they will have it under summer oh, banner wow. and so it kind of hurt the band in a way that, you know, I think people thought, well, that's a new direction of the band, you know, that's oh. what they're going to do. And that wasn't, that was totally something we wanted to do separate. Right. And if one day, because you never know, mm. we will do a second album for everyone, it, you know, someone won't be mentioned anywhere. I mean, it's really something we want to have separate. Yeah, that, that was the moment, you know, Chaos left the band, didn't have a guitar player, nowhere to go on tour, uh, didn't want to, to start writing new songs for someone because we didn't know, know if he would have been a future. It wasn't right. a, bre a breakout, you know, Mass was still together and we, we were mm -hmm. meeting from time to time. Yeah. But there were no activity. I mean, I think I wasn't. 2001 we didn't play one single show the whole year and that never happened before so it's a little bit like well we're no longer on the map we're no longer there we nothing happening right beside that project but so that's why I say 2002 when Macro joined the band was really like us being back on the on the map and you know doing things again in the fan world there is a lot of conjecture about Eternal being your last record. Like it almost sounded like a last record in terms of subject matter and stuff. There yeah. was so so much change. And then I'm trying to think when it was that I saw, I can't remember what show it was, but I said something to Maz and he was just like, well, it wouldn't be such a bad thing, you know, if we just did other stuff. And I was terrified. Well, it could have turned differently, but you know, I'm happy it turned the way it turned. I am know. happy too. Yeah, that's cool. In terms of your own personal expression, in terms of your lyrics, it seems like you're really saying much more, more like worldly things in your music now. Right. And it seems like you have a point to make. I don't even know if I do have a point to make, but hopefully with the time, you know, you got something that matter to say a little yeah. bit more than before. Oh, yeah. And certainly, oh. you know, I suppose, you know, our, at least our two first albums, they were pretty much influenced by my readings, by my mm. phantasm or my, my, I don't know, projection. But it wasn't really mm. like something I, I went through or there were not much experience in my life, you know, I could right. talk about or, or, and I think with the time, yeah, you know, you, you probably have something to say because you went through things and you, you 
-hmm. things tend to repeat somehow and when the, the next circle is coming ah uh, yeah another following thing so I'm, I might try to, to break this thing and go somewhere else because or else you, you go round and round and round like we, we said before you know right you're reaching 30 and you're still thinking like you were 15 well, right it could be too I mean why not but that's not my thing that's not mm. what life is all about to me I mean yeah. it's about well, there's going forward and no. trying at least you know to to have more than one life in your life that would be a great mm. thing isn't it mm. I mean at least that's what I'm thinking yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah so is writing music enough for you would you want to write anything else or you know what I could do nothing <laughs> actually for real I could do nothing <laughs> I would be fine but uh <laughs> It's enjoyable too, you know, it, yeah. it's like, I don't have to write something, it, it's not mm. really a need. Sometimes it is, but, but not to have lyrics. I, I, I need to write something, but for myself. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be constricted in a way that it could be given to others, you know. It, it, it right. might be just for myself, it, it is rough, mm. you know, it is um, just the, the first thing. Then I might need some time. Then I, I try to construct it because I, I want to mm. share it. And yeah. you want to do it good, you know. You yeah, yeah, just yeah. don't want to have the the first, the first throw or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. Because it really feels like the new record is written from a completely different perspective, like in terms of growth and development. Like it's more about humanity. I guess. I, you yeah, know. it has, but it, it was already somewhere there uh, in the Renault Fly. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Plus two. I mean, you know, you focus on yourself all the time, which is. Not, nothing wrong with that, you know, why not? But you might, you might reach a point when you even bored of your own self, you know, you, mm. you, uh, you know, it, yeah. it doesn't add up, you know. Yeah. And I think, you know, meeting other people add up a lot mm -hmm. of things, really, you know, the age change is like probably the best thing in the world, so. So yeah, you know, you want to share a little bit of what is in your mind, so you, you try to make it as good as possible for people to take it and, yeah, supposedly. Yeah, because, uh, because the, I mean, your early stuff seems to just be like one person saying some stuff, and the the later. I think stuff the two first albums they, they they were dark because all my 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 I don't know the thing I was interested in probably dark you know poetry yeah. paintings you know I did mm -hmm. love Giger as a painter I did have you met Giger? By the way? Yeah, a few times, but you know, nothing really okay. came out of it because yeah. it was just like hi hi. Oh, okay. You know, he, he's not really a talkative person, mm. and I can be eventually, <laughs> but you know, I I need a little touch or yeah. something. And, so you yeah. two sitting in a room is not going to be like a whole lot of. Uh, it wasn't because actually yeah. I talked a little bit with his girlfriend, but he wasn't talking much. Just hi hi. Mm -hmm. I mean, a couple of things we yeah. said. But, you know. Well, you shot uh, your band photo. Yeah, totally. That, that's the first time I met him was just before that one because we mm -hmm. we had actually arranged it to be in the museum and to know if he, he was agree and how much it would cost and everything. And uh, we just had to drink together with one guy who knew everyone, and, and that was the first time I met him. Then I, okay. I met him a couple of times after that. You have a new Giger tattoo. I don't know how new it is. Well, <laughs> it's 15 years old. Is it? Yeah, it's okay. that. Who did the tattoo? Uh, Philip Lowe. Oh, he did? Yeah, he did. he's I a great, great guy. I mean, yeah. uh, his father did this one. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, this, wow. Yeah. Wow, you're gonna have to get skinned. <laughs> like, like when you die, like Peel. you have to, yeah, you have to leave those to somebody. Those are like in the tattoo world. Those are like, yeah, they big are. Big deal. They are, yeah. Wow. Wow. And Philip. But you have a piece from Felix. That's amazing. Yeah, that's good. Oh that's my good. God. Yeah. Especially yeah. this one. They're actually. just right. Yeah. The baffle man from. Yeah. Me. 